In this video, let us work on list and list elements. List elements or values can be processed by applying number of list operators. For example, membership operator, deletion operator, multiple assignment operator and augmented assignments. Similarly, list data type support multiple methods to process the list values. They are sort method, append and insert method to extend the existing list as well as index method to obtain the element by supplying the index value. Let us learn a few important list operations. First is getting the length of a list. We can apply the length function to obtain the number of values or items present in a given list. For example, we have a list spam having three elements and by making a call to a method length of spam will return the value 3 which is the number of elements present in the list spam. Lists are mutable. It means that value present in a list can be changed at runtime by specifying the index of that element. We can use the index operator along with the assignment statement to change the value of a given list. Let us take up this example. We have a list spam and we want to change the element that is bat to a different value, this value. This is zeroth element and this is first element. We are going to change the first element to the different value as well as we want to change the last element to a uh, integer value. This is the last element. We can use either minus one or we can use spam of three refers to elephant. And now we are changing that fourth element with a new value which is of type integer. And let us print the list. We can see that list values are now changed to different values. List concatenation and replication. Like strings, we can apply concatenation and replication operator on lists. The plus operator is used to combine two lists to create a new list. Similarly, we can use replication operator star to augment the existing list by replicating the list elements with a specific number. Let us take up the example. In the first example, we are concatenating two different types of lists. This is string list and this is integer list. And now concatenation operator results in a bigger list having six elements. Similarly, we can augment the existing list by replicating the list elements. Here we are replicating the list elements three times by, with the, by specifying the integer value three. And now we have a list with nine elements. Similarly, you can concatenate different lists with the varying sizes or lengths to create larger lists. 
how do I delete list elements? For that, we have del statement. This statement will delete values at an index in a list. After deletion, all the values in the list which are found after the deleted value will be moved up by one index. Let us take up the example. Here we have a list spam with four elements and we want to delete the third element that is the rat. What we have to write is we have to use the statement del followed by the list name with the index, index of the item to be deleted. And after that, if you print, you will get only three elements and the element elephant is moved up in the list by one index. Let's delete the second element, third element, that is spam of two, elephant. Now, after deletion, we are left with only two elements, that is cat and bat. Note that del statement can also be used with the simple variable to delete the variable. Once you have applied this del statement on a variable, you cannot use that variable further in the program. If you try to use the variable after the deletion, you will get an error called name error because the variable no longer exists in the memory during the life or lifetime of that program. Membership operators. In Python, we have two membership operators, namely in and not in operators. These two operators determine whether a given value is present in a list or not. In case of in operator, if the value that is key is found in the list, then it returns a boolean value true, false otherwise. And if you use the operator not in, then key not in with the list will return a true if the value is not present true otherwise. This is a simple syntax to use in and not in operator. A value, a key, in operator followed by the list name. Let us take up the example. Let's check whether the string howdy is present in the list. Yes, it is present. We get the value true. Let us test the cat, whether the string cat is present in spam. It is not present. It returns false. Let's test whether howdy is not present in spam. It is present in spam. That's why we get the value false. Application of membership operators. In and not in operators are normally used in decision making and branching as well as looping. Let us take up a sample code to illustrate the use of in operator in decision making that is to search an element in a given list. Let's take up the list my pets with three items and we request the user to enter the pet name with the input function and let's test the user supplied value is present in the list. If it is present, then we display the pet name saying that is my pet 
and if it is not present we display that the pet named whatever the supplied name is not present this is how uh, we can use in and not in operator in decision making to process the list elements as well as the other data structures let us take up the one application of lists in assigning values to a set of variables that is called multiple assignment this multiple assignment is a method wherein we can assign multiple variables with a set of values let us take up this code we have a, a list called cat and we want to initialize the items of that list to three different variables like size color and decomposition the usual way is we have to write three different assignment statements but in python we can avoid these three assignment statements and we can assign all the three values to three different variables by assigning the list name like this on the left hand side we have a three variables and on the right hand side of assignment we have a list name remember that the number of variables on the left hand side and the length of the list must be exactly equal otherwise the python runtime will display an error called value error this is the example wherein we mention four variables but we have only three elements in the list and the python runtime produces the value error for this type of assignment augmented assignment operator in many situations while assigning a value to a variable we will frequently use that variable in the expression of assignment let us take up the example we have a variable spam with a value and we want to add one to the existing value we write spam equal to spam plus 1 this can be written with the augmented operator plus equal this augmented operators are very common in programming languages like compiled languages c c++ java c sharp and other interpreted languages here is a set of augmented operators we have a plus equal minus equal star equal slash equal as well as percent modulus operator till now we worked on list operators let us learn to apply the methods on lists as well as list elements a method is same as function except it is called on a value and list data type has got number of such methods to find add remove as well as to manipulate the values present in a list let us take up the first common method called index this method is used to retrieve an index of a given item if the element is present in the list the index of a value will be returned and if the value isn't pre present in the list then python runtime produces value error let us have a look at this example we have a list called spam and we want to know the index of a value hello write the list name with dot operator there's association operator and the method name followed by the argument there is a value and this function this method will return 
a integer which is nothing but the index of that a value provided the value is present in the list otherwise it returns an error let us take up this example we want to know the index of this string howdy 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 this a lengthy string is not present as an item in the list and if you try to apply this index method on the list by supplying this element or item value will result in this value error because the string of this length is not present in the list as a as an item append and insert methods to add new values to the existing list we can use append or insert method the append method adds the element or item always to the end of the list and the syntax of using this method is list name with dot operator followed by the method name that is append and the value that is to be appended to the existing list need to be supplied as an argument this is the example we have a list spam and we want to add one more item by using the method append and now this spam is augmented with one more item and the length of spam now becomes four the insert method allows us to insert a value at a particular index within the list and this insert method takes two arguments first argument is the index and the second is a value and the first argument to the insert is the index for the new value that is to be that is being inserted onto the list and the second argument is the new value that, that we are going to insert at that new index consider the example here we have a spam with three elements and we want to add one more item at the location one here after cat what we have to write is spam dot insert the new index and the new value and once you print this list you can see the new value is inserted at location one note that the return value of both these methods append and insert is none and both the methods belongs to a single data type that is list it means that append and insert methods are list methods and can be called only on lists not on other values such as strings integers tuples etc removing values from list with the remove method the remove method takes one argument that is a value to be removed from the list this is the syntax of using this method list name with a method remove followed by argument there is a value to be removed in this example we have a spam with four elements and we want to remove the element at index 1 that is the second element string bat and after applying this method remove on the value bat let us print the list spam and now we can see only three elements 
are remaining in that list span. If you attempt to delete a value that doesn't exist in a list will result in a value error and if the value appears multiple times in a list then only the first instance of the value will be removed from the list and all other subsequent values are retained in the list after the remove method. Let us consider a spam with these elements and you can see cat is repeated three times. You can see at location 0, location 3 and location 5. And if you remove the element or the value cat, only the first instance there is the cat string at location 0 will be removed and all other subsequent instances or occurrences will remain in the list. You can see the cat, the two occurrences are still found in the list even after we applied a remove method on a value cat. We worked on two ways to delete list values one with the del statement and second with the remove method when to use delete statement and when to apply remove method del statement is good to use when you know the index of a value if you are sure of having or knowing the index of a value then use a del statement and if you are not sure of the index of a value to be removed from the list then use or apply the remove method. Next is the sort method. You can sort the elements present in a list with the sort method. This method takes a very simple syntax, the list name followed by sort and we can specify arguments or even you can specify no arguments. Arguments are optional. First let us sort the integer list. This is the integer list, unsorted one and with one sort instruction. Now we have a spam sorted in ascending order. This is a default behavior of a sort method. Sort method always sorts the elements in ascending order if we don't specify the specific arguments which determine the sorting sequence. The second example sorts the strings in the order alphabetical order. We have a unsorted array or list now and after applying the sort method we have all the elements sorted in the alphabetical order. You can pass a value true for the reverse keyword argument to the sort method in order to sort the values in the descending order or reverse order. Let us use the keyword argument a reverse with the value true. Now the list spam is sorted in the descending order of ascibetical values or alphabetical values. Note, sort method sorts the list in place. That's why do not try to capture the return value by writing this code spam equal to spam dot sort. And you cannot sort the list having mixed data types. For example, you have a list with integers and strings. 
and you cannot apply the sort method as the Python doesn't know how to compare these two different values of different types. Actually, the sort method uses the ASCII value for the sorting. That's why sometimes it is not called as alphabetical order, ASCII-betical order. As sometimes the uppercase letters will appear before the lowercase letters. Let us take up the example for the note 3. We have a list spam and uh, having the strings with the first letter capital A, capital B and small letters etc. And we apply the sort method on this list and once we print this list after sort, you can see Alice finds the first place and ants finds the fourth place. This is because the sorting happens based on the ASCII values, not actual alphabets. In order to sort the values in regular alphabetical order, we need to use another keyword argument called key and we need to pass the string dot lower as a value for the key so that we can have a regular alphabetical sorting order. Consider this example. Here we have a list spam with lowercase and uppercase letters and we are using the keyword argument with the value lower and now you can see the list is sorted as per the regular alpha alphabetical order. Now let us take up programming examples. In the last chapter, we wrote a function to return a different message, a string, depending on the random number that is passed to a function. We wrote this code. This function takes the argument and based on this argument, we are going to return a message. And this was the main program. We use the rand int to generate the random number and then we pass that random number to a function and the function returns the appropriate message and we print that. And this is a lengthy code and we can reduce this the length of this code with the help of list. What we can we have to do is we put all these messages as a values in a list and we generate a random number and that generated random number becomes the index and we access the value at that particular index and print the value which is a, a message at a particular index. This is the code, a short code. What we do is we put all these messages in the same order from 0 to 8 index. This is index 0 up to 8 and then we pass the index which is generated by the randint method and the range for this rand in is from 0 to 8. That is length of messages is 9, 9 minus 1, 8. And thus we can use this concept of list to even reduce the length of a code in such circumstances or scenarios. Let's take up the second 
problem. Write a program to create a list of Fibonacci numbers for a given range n. n must be a positive number, let us say 10, 20, 5, 8, etc. How do we solve this uh, simple problem? We can generate Fibonacci numbers without lists also. But here, let us use the concept of list to generate Fibonacci number. The definition of Fibonacci number is recursive in nature. The nth Fibonacci number is computed as the summation of n minus 1th Fibonacci number and n minus 2nd Fibonacci number. Fn is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. What we have to do is we use a bottom up approach that is also called as a dynamic programming concept. We try to solve a smallest problem where we directly, we know the solution, Fibonacci of 1 is 1, Fibonacci of 2 is also 1. And Fibonacci of 3 is calculated, or calculated as Fibonacci of f of Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci number at 1. And since we store these Fibonacci values in a list, we can easily retrieve the Fibonacci numbers with the index and we can generate the Fibonacci sequence. Let us see the program. We read the range, the number of elements to be displayed. And we create a list called F Fibonacci number to hold the Fibonacci number. And right now I have initialized two Fibonacci numbers. Let us start from zero. Even you can start from one comma one, no problem. And I is a counter which holds the number of elements that are present in the list F. Right now we have two, zero and one. And while we read the range, till we reach the range, while i is less than or equal to n, we have to compute the new Fibonacci number, that is a equal to Fibonacci at n minus one position and Fibonacci at n minus two position. And this A, new computed value, need to be appended at the end of the list. See, I have not used the insert function. I have used the append function because the newly created Fibonacci number is being appended to the end of the list. And also, meantime, I just increment the counter that I have calculated the new value. And this becomes even the, uh, uh, the counter uh, to uh, track the number of uh, Fibonacci numbers that are uh, generated uh, at, at runtime. And finally, we display the list as it is. Even you can display with a meaningful message and element by element by using uh, the for statement. Here, uh, we are displaying the list as it is, which, uh, which gives the uh, Fibonacci sequence for a given uh, range. Let us take up a third problem. The problem is create a function which takes the array as an argument and function returns the average or a mean of elements present in a list. Also, we are called to write a mean program wherein we read n numbers from the user and these n numbers have to be stored in a list wherein we can pass that list to a function. The, this problem can be solved 
in a easily what we have to do is you read the positive integer n and then go on read these n numbers and put them in a list and the good a better choice of method to create the list of numbers is use the append function go on append the red elements onto the list and once you have read all the n elements pass that array to a function wherein you can use a built-in function sum and then you can divide by that sum with the length of the array which is nothing but a mean or the average and which can be returned from the function and you can print the average let us have a look at this uh, program here i have a defined a function average which takes the list as an argument x and returns the average sum of x divided by length of x length of x gives the number of elements in a list sum of x is a built in function which is also associated with the list which which adds all the elements present in a given list the main program what we are doing is we create a empty list with just a two square bracket this is the notation of empty list l is the list and uh, we use a counter i is zero implies that no elements are present in the list and what we have to do is we go on read the numbers from the user from the user till we read n numbers and upon reading the number go on append that number onto the list that's why you can see l dot append directly you read the number and convert it to integer this is the argument to append is nothing but the uh, red integer value and go on increment the counter and finally you can print the average by making a call to a function average you can see we are using the function reference as a argument to a print function which is a built in function where l is the list that is being passed to a function this is how uh, you can uh, write a code to solve this uh, simple problem in this problem we have to create two lists one list is for strings and another for integers merge these two lists and sort this is quite simple problem which can be solved by reading n strings from the user and n integers from the user as and when you read the strings and integers put them in the respective lists and then use a concatenation operator to merge these two lists and finally apply the sort method to sort the merge lists here is the program what we create is uh, two empty lists list 1 is to hold uh, strings and list 2 is to hold uh, integers and uh, we read n and m values to read n strings and uh, m is a number counter to read uh, m integers here instead of append function i am using another function extend it's very similar to append uh, the main functionality is to augment the list this extend function will not take a value as such it takes the list value as an argument and it combines the list value to the implicit list so list1 dot extend this number and i am using the square brackets to indicate that this is a list what it what it does is it just extend the list one by adding the another list 
even you can directly use append list one dot append of directly number you don't have to write the square bracket either you can use append or extend here i am using one more method of a list called extend same way you read the integers m integers and append them or you extend the list by adding the uh, number again in the list format or notation and finally you concatenate these two lists and then sort in the previous uh, uh, slides i had told that do not sort the mixed data items as python do not know how to compare them yes again it's true here the what the output that you get is first you get all the integers sorted in ascending order followed by all the strings which are sorted in the ascibetical order and uh, independently they are sorted and uh, you will now get the list three sorted in that order all the integers ordered ascend in the ascending order first followed by the the strings as a final problem let us solve the selection sort problem write a function to swap to array elements or list elements and use this function to sort the elements list elements in ascending order with the selection sort algorithm here is a program we have a function swap which takes three arguments first is a list and second one is the position of the element to be sorted that is i and this is the position of the second element to be swapped and this is the uh, well known code to swap the two list items t is equal to x of i and x of i equal to x of j and x of j equal to t the main program we read the total number of elements to be sorted and uh, create a empty list l and we go on read the n elements numbers from the console and then this segment is a is the actual uh, selection sort we have n minus 1 passes and uh, and for every pass in every pass or each pass we find the position of the minimum element and then once we have a position of the minimum element we swa swap the element that is being uh, considered for the nth ith pass and we exchange the minimum element with the element of the ith pass thereby we sort the elements as this uh, procedure is uh, is known to you i will not explain the selection sort algorithm uh, here the intention is to explain how a list is used to store the elements and uh, how we can sort the individual elements without uh, uh, using the uh, built in sort function this is what the uh, idea and uh, also to illustrate uh, passing of list as an argument to a function and how to swap the list elements by uh, by using the positions of the or indices of those list elements this is what the uh, main intention to summarize in this video we worked on different list operators especially in not in plus star deal statement and the multiple assignment concept as well as augmented assignment operators we worked on the application of different list methods on list values for example getting the index of an item inserting item onto the list appending the item 
extending the existing list by appending the new list and also method sort to sort the list elements finally we executed a few simple problems with the help of list and by using the appropriate list operators and methods to solve these simple problems.